Hi, I'm Frank Cromer. Welcome to the wacky world of public access. You watch public access television, come on, it's the ultimate reality showcase where the common slob gets to climb up on an electronic soapbox and speak their mind, no matter how little or strange their mind is. Witness the far out aliens called the Unitarian. The Unarius Academy of Science has established a library of over 125 volumes that have been transmitted from other terrestrial planets and highly evolved spiritual worlds. Ruth E. Norman, known as Uriel, co-founder and director of the Unarius Academy, has received contacts from other planets through mental transmission. All of these 32 Earth worlds that are the interplanetary confederation, all 32 worlds have already had this teaching. What do Tom Green, Greg the Bunny, and Mystery Science Theater 3000 all have in common? They all sprang from the loins of public access TV. Think of public access TV as the farm leagues for cable and network TV, you know, the bigs. Granted, most of the players won't even get a tryout, but you never know. So let's look at some potential stars of tomorrow. I want to talk about sex. The Dr. Susan Block Show is about the many splendid aspects of human sexuality. You wouldn't believe it. You look at them, they look like such nice fellas. You couldn't imagine in your whole life that they would been for most psychotic. The girls that I brought to the show to shoot have now left me and got on the tour bus. And I'm here alone with you two guys in a dying light and I can't shoot anything. Sounds like a good show? Sure, in the bus. Why is everybody clothed? Is, why, is every, why are you guys all naked? See, that's what I'm talking about. What you, I don't even know. Hey, oh my God. I'm grateful to be with you. Thankful to this opportunity to be able to come and sit here and speak what's empty my insides and entrails to you. All my shows are dedicated to the most talented people I think in town. Uh, exotic dancers, uh, musicians, artists, um, and everything else you could possibly think about. Now let's meet two public access TV chefs. Chef Bon Appetit. Thank you very, very much. And tonight uh, I'd like to welcome you to Chef Bon Appetit, Master Chef. I think we have a very delicious menu tonight that you'll enjoy. Hi. I'm Cecile DeMille. Welcome to Fork Play. On today's show, we're going to be featuring honeymoon cuisine. Now, usually, folks, when people ask me if I can cook, I say, well, sure I can, but not usually in the kitchen. What great gourmet meals are they cooking? Please get out your paper and pencil. I'm sure you'll be wanting to uh, write this down. We're having tuna salad, melon balls, soda, and chips. And for dessert in the S&M parlor, Nookie Cookie. Check out Chef Bonnet Petit's eye patch on two different shows. Hey, that's not kosher. Hey, why that might not even be his real name. And I'm not sure if Cecil DeMille's making a dish or just making her guest. You be the judge. You are a really cool guy. And I'm so glad you're here today because I certainly need all the help I can get. Well, you do well in the kitchen. Well, I do well in the kitchen, but I do much better out of the kitchen. People that get to know me real well know that. And if you're lucky, you might get to visit the s and parlor. Over 50% of public access programming is religious TV. Why? Because every reverend, priest, rabbi, nun, guru, 
or other televangelists all want to tell you about the Lord. God. 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 Dios. God. Jesus. The Supreme Person. God. 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 God Himself. Now let's bow our heads for today's public access sermon from preachers across America. This is a television program where we hope to minister to you. You will be ministered unto. I love you so much today. I love you, I love you, I love you, love you. And you know what? You can't do anything about it. Oh, the fullness of God will bring you faith. If God tells you. This means something that's been done with oils. In and it deals with UFOs. The Bible teaches us that God He's going to make me the richest man in Texas. We can't take things personal and say if someone maybe cuts us off in traffic. So you have to be careful what you are doing. The world's going to end tonight or could end tonight. And, and uh, you know, this is so stupid because God's power is crushing wicked people out of existence. Cause that stuff is good, you know. Hey, I like what I'm doing, you know. Mm. You know. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. You, the wages of sin is the eternal joy, eternal cosmic energy of the Creator, which fills your heart with the joy, and which resides in your third eye right here, is called the power of ten thousand sun. Om. Amen. You know, it wouldn't be fair to critique public access TV without showing you some of my little show. It's a live call-in show from Hollywood where I tell folks to relax and beat the heat, pick up the phone, and tell me what's your belief? <laughs> your beef. What's your beef? What's your beef? What's your beef? What's your beef? What's your... I cannot even say the word. And now, your host, Hollywood's own Frank Cromer. I always incorporate my personal life in my public access TV show. Here's a woman who knocked me out on her first appearance on my program. That's, uh... Jacqueline Hyde of Women of Wrestling. I'm pretty sure that's her. Why don't you look at the camera so that, that's you, ja isn't it, Jacqueline? Oh, I see you're in a good mood. Uh, now, is this the good Jacqueline or the bad Jacqueline? Or are oh, you just big wuss? Because, you know, everybody knows that this wrestling's fake. And, I mean, you're just wrestling women. That's no big deal. You know what I mean? I mean, what are you doing up here? Uh, oh. So, of course, I was smitten with this tough lady, and she appeared on What's Your Beef as a guest. Check out how really toasted she was. Now, right off, I must ask you this. Can I put this is it on fake? Right yeah. Is it fake? How, would I, how am I supposed hey, to know that? We're going to switch you over to the studio. But it's gonna I wouldn't know. Talks, no one okay. told me while they were right. trying to beat me up. Nobody I, told me. I mean, it seemed like it was some people who can't fight who are just so weak and stupid, you know. But well, I wasn't asking about wrestling. Everybody knows that's fake. I was talking about your rap. Well, that was pretty sexist, huh? By Valentine's Day, I was hooked and I had Vanya play Cupid. I thought I'd surprise her with this declaration at the end of the show. Big mistake, Einstein. Vanya, look, you came over to the house the other day, you smelled like heaven, you were great, you were vibrant. You, this energy pulsed through me like electricity. I'm in love with you. I just wanted to tell you, tell all my friends, I told you it was going to be fucking good, didn't I? Anyway. I know that you'll never love me, you told me like that, you don't like me like that, that's fine, but I would consider a supreme compliment and you, you would continue to be my friend. Thank you. I love you, Vanya Marinkovic. Everybody, thanks for coming out! As you might be able to tell from the frozen look on her mug, Vanya was about as happy as if I hit her in the face with a cod. We only appeared on one more show together. Ever hear of identity theft? Well, my last girlfriend stole my heart and my soul. I find that hard to believe. Oh yeah, that I was so gullible? No, that you had a girlfriend. I gained some national notoriety when I crashed this year's Oscars for the sake of my show. Take a look at what happened during last week's Oscars. Steve Noble reports on how easy it was for at least one group to go right past a security checkpoint. He goes by the name Stretch, and along with two of his buddies, Frank and Scooby, 
They wanted to get some footage of the Oscars for a public access cable TV show. But what started as a prank ended up exposing what they say was a huge breach in Oscar security. I can't believe us. Look at all the cops. <laughs> we cut through that security like hot knife through butter. They might ask you for ID. They breezed through two police checkpoints. Although their vehicle was checked for explosives, they were never asked for photo ID. It was totally smooth sailing. This unlikely trio couldn't believe how easy it was to find an apparent hole in Oscar security. They say their limo was waved through all the way to the red carpet where some of Hollywood's biggest stars were arriving. That's it for the wacky world of public access. Remember our slogan, public access. It doesn't have to be good to be crap. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.